Uh, hello, you're listening to Mystic Orange. This is Talking in the Shadows, um, uh, episode 26 of Talking in the Shadows. Um, get, um, sit, uh, ra- sit around, um, I hope you're all enjoying these uh, episodes of Talking in the Shadows. Um, in this episode, I'll be reviewing um, Wings Club Season 1, Episode 16. Um, but before we get into the meat and potato, let me know how you've been doing. Um, I've been doing great. I've just been uh, binging um, uh, through Lauren Z side. Um, her her video on Sally Face just popped up, up yesterday and I've been bridging through those so yeah I highly recommend checking Lauren Z's side out uh, of her live stream on Sally Face so yeah it's a re- really fun to watch so yeah so get your snacks and uh, drinks ready um i'll be reviewing um uh, this episode uh, of winx club i've seen other uh, youtubers reviewing this episode such as winx club uh, forever podcast and um you know kind of war um i think that in this episode um um winx club forever podcast actually um did uh invite Unicorn of War so they kind of did a collaboration in this in her podcast video of this episode so yeah I will link um, I will try to link um, both of these videos uh, uh, either the description or I might post it in the community tab Um, yeah So make sure to check out um, my community tab. I always post there for things. I also post uh, like Wings Club songs and other Wings Club things. So yeah, uh, check them out. Um, before uh, getting this video, bear in mind I do stutter a lot. So uh, be mindful of how I speak uh, and stuff. Um, so yeah, um, we're just gonna relax and just, um, enjoy this video. And if you're not into videos like this, then this uh, channel isn't for you. Um, you know, this channel is where I uh, have talk behind the cameras and, you know, yeah. So, uh, make sure to check out Unicorn of War and with... Uh, forever podcast as well subscribe to them um yeah they have good content uh, um so we're reviewing episode 16 um of wings club of season one um this one of my favorite episodes um actually it is my favorite episode of season one because there's so much to talk about um um, I would say in, in comparison to the last episode of episode 15, it has a lot, lot to talk about. Episode 15 was kind of a boring episode. Uh, the girls just find an envelope and, you know, it was a very boring filler episode. So, yeah. I, I'm glad that in the Fawkes dub, um, they kind of made a change to the uh, episode 15. Of having the beginning of episode 16 be the um, cliffhanger of episode 15. Um, it kind of made the, that episode a little bit better from being boring. Um, so yeah. Um, so um, at the start uh, it's just um, uh, the tricks uh, create this um 
Nightmare Gargoyle. In the Cinellin version, it's called Nightmare Monster, but um, the Fockers actually identified this um, mythical creature as a gargoyle. Um, I want to say that I'm, uh, I'm, I love all the mythical creatures that are represented in Winx Globe. You wouldn't believe how much mythical creatures that Winx Globe has. Um, I have uh, created uh, videos before talking in the shadows about uh, like um, um, all the creatures that, uh, from humans to uh, other creatures um, that exist in Winx Globe. I mean, I didn't finish making that video and I don't feel like I want to finish it because, um, you know, um, it's, a, it's a chore to have to go through, but um, I had fun making the ones I did make. Um, but yeah, Whistler has so many cool mystical creatures, like the gargoyle, for example, but they also had creatures uh, like that. That willow creature and the turtle creature in episode eleven. Um, so yeah. So they cre um, create um, this gargoyle thing. Um, it's a nightmare gargoyle which uh, drains pe drains the people um, by giving them nightmares. Um, so yeah, uh, you just see it. And it falls down from the castle uh, onto the victims, wings victims. Um, so yeah, um, this should be like easy way to drain Bloom and get her power of the dragon fire. So um, uh, we're in Alfia and it's at mi midnight. Uh, the girls come back from the movie movie theater. Which I think is a really fun uh, move. Uh, in the original, which I didn't uh, know, because uh, I haven't watched the uh, Cineloom that much. I mean, I have watched the Cineloom. I, I watch all things with Wings Club. But I'm used to the Fockers uh, version of this episode. Um, I forget that th they all have this parent uh, teacher conferences, uh, Parents Day. Which um yes kind of common in like um it, it's kind of uh, kind of like um in most schools in real world which I think it's cool that they would have like parents days but yeah I just think uh, for this uh, thing it would be uninteresting because um I mean if we we never see the Parents teaching covers anyway, so it's kind of weird that they mention it, uh, but you know, um, and I also think it would be weird for this, uh, um, for Bloom parents to come in this episode, because, um, according to uh, the se second episode, Bloom's mother just goes past the barrier. Uh, I mean, they can't go past the barrier. So yeah. Um, but then again, they drop this continuity, continuity in later episodes, like in um, season six where Bloom's mom comes in, um, or season five when uh, Bloom parents come into Althea, which is kind of a bit um, an odd, kind of odd thing. So, uh, I think. I think I really like the Winkler version of, I mean, the Fockers version of this. Um, they all watch, they all watch this movie, and they all gain something different out of it. Um, I and I, I'm glad that they still integrated like uh, parental issues, like Stella and Musa talk about their parents, and you know they talk about how they miss their parents and parents fighting. So yeah. <coughs> I think it's a really good move that the Fockers had that. Um, and I also think it's funny how like 
Liam is kind of like into the movie, but uh, Flora is, is kind of like scared of it. Um, and also like uh, she had, uh, you know, she had all the popcorn uh, that Misa Bagdaba, um, you know, said. Um, I thought it was funny. Um, um, as as they come into the hallways, um, Tekna just uh, looks out about, and you know, she's kind of alert about the uh, her surroundings because she can't hear the noise around her. Um, so yeah. Um, uh, they all go to sleep, and unfortunately, Stella is um, the first victim. I think this is um, kind of um, uh, f- uh, interesting because, you know, Stella sleeps alone. Um, one thing you need to know about horror movies is to never go off alone uh, because, you know, um, you're, you're the weakest link and uh, vi- you're the first to be the victim. Um, it's a horror movie basics, so... Stella was going to be the vict- first victim anyway, uh, so yeah. Um, so the gargoyle was hovers over Stella, which, uh, in my opinion, was re- very weird. It, um, you know, when I was younger, I used to think this was a little bit weird. I thought it was a baby. It, um, it looked like a baby, uh, just uh, cr- crawling over Stella. Uh, when I was younger, it de- definitely uh, freaked me out because uh, you know how it like just clings onto Stella in this position. Um, it was there's a lot of things in in Wings Club that is creep, bit creepy, especially in like in the early seasons, like season one and season two. Um, I can't think of uh, other times where like. Um, Wings Club has been creepy. Like, um, I think you'll find in the later episodes, um, where the Magic City is like f- filled with c- corpses. Uh, you know, it, it was uh, Wings Club um didn't shy away from adding creepy things. So um, it. Stella kind of has a dream about her par- parents, um, uh, King Radius and uh, Queen Luna. Um, we see them in the first time. I think th- it's really incredible. Um, you know, seeing seeing the uh, full view of Radius and Queen, Queen Luna is just. They look so uh, elegant and beautiful. Um, I think, like, back then, this would have been the only scene we see Luna. Um, Because, you know, uh, in the golden age of Wind Club, um, Radius would have been only seen in this episode and also in season three. uh, Luna isn't pr- present in uh, season three, so yeah, you know, you be always had like mystery of what Luna was like until season five came along. Um, so yeah, so that was like before two thousand twelve. Um, so Stella has dream about um the her parents, and then in the later. Um, the the baby turns into like uh, like a po- it's like a half porcupine a uh, half um, wolf kind of creature and then Stella still has uh, nightmares um, is um, you know her parents split up and then she sees like a mirror uh, of her and then it turns into like a, a watery thing and splits her in half. I think that scene also creeped me out. Um, I just thought it was weird how like Stella w- would be s- snapped in half. So yeah. Um. 
And then Stella wakes wakes up. She's freaked out, and you know, um, she screams, and everyone hears her. Um, they all try to comfort her, but you know, um, Techna mentions uh, uh, she wonders if there's a creature nearby. Um, music kind of brushes her off, and you know, they inadvertently uh, music is challenging the monster. So, you know, uh, the next victim would be Misa. So they all go back to bed. Um, the monster uh, comes in to um, Misa and Tekna's room, um, which I think it was creepy. But I think, you know, this form of uh, uh, the creature isn't too bad. It's just a porcupine uh, creature. But I can imagine it being very heavy. You know, like, um, no one, I wonder if it, you know, Misa felt any crushing, uh, like, physical crush from that creature. Because, you know, uh, I would, you know, having the, the heavy weight uh, on me. Um, so, um, yeah, it kind of spits on Misa as well. You know, you, you'll feel it. Um, you'll see, in, in, like, a scene where she's, like, um, you know, um, she kind of has a dream about, uh, her home world, Melody. I think it, it, it looks really uh, beautiful. Um, I think in this, I, I think I miss how, like, season one or season two would represent Melody before we see it. Um, this is how it would have looked like before season five. So, you know, um, there are people who will say we don't get to see enough of Melody, but in season one, they did uh, show Melody, and it's in Musa's dream. Um, I can't confirm that this is Melody, uh, like, fully. It could be just her dream, but, you know, it would be weird for her to not look like this, because, you know, um, it's a, it seems, like, realistic. A dream um, of her home world, and I I can see like it does have like Japanese uh, influence, like the sea, um, and having th those boats uh, go by. Um, yeah, I think it's really interesting. Um, and then you know she sees her, um, her mother, which I think she looks really pretty. We see Misa uh, mom before uh, in uh, episode eight, so yeah. Um, she sees her, and uh, I think it's really sad, you know, just uh, seeing her mother. Um, you know, she tells um, Misa that she can't hear any music, uh, which is I think it's um vital part of Misa. Uh, you know, um. Like he, Musa is like a mu music is, is like a expression for Musa, so you know having it gone away, away is like having no ox oxygen around to, to breathe. So yeah, um, so uh, Musa's mom later then vanishes, and you know she feels like she's all alone. Um, uh. It's kind of sad because it's kind of like her mom, her mother is gone, and now it's just Amisa. Um, so yeah, and then she goes like, "Oh, um, she can't hear m music either," and then she screams, um, which I think it's um, kind of chill. It gave, it gave me chills. Uh, I didn't like. In the original version, um, I think um, I've seen the original version and it's just Misa screaming for Riven. Um, I think that was a bit a uh, dumb uh, thing to add because this dream is about Misa's mother. Why is it? Why is she screaming about Riven? Um, and, and also, you know, um, Riven wasn't any way nice to uh, Misa at all, you, you know, 
um, she let witches go after her, so, um, you know, so I, I don't get the Sinaloom uh, version of that uh, dream, but I did enjoy the Fokker's version of the dream, so yeah, um, after, uh, after uh, Misa being the victim, uh, she kind of like rolls off the uh, bed. It kind of a bit weird, you know. Uh, Misa just uh, dozing off. Um. So um, the, uh, mo- the the monster turns into like a um, like an insect with a, a one eye. It's kind of like a daddy long leg kind of creature um but you know so it it goes up the next person next to her is Tekna who's in the same room as her so you know the, the monster is kind of smart you know first it goes after Stella being all alone and then it goes after Musa for ch- for challenging it and then you know Going after Tekna, which is next, who is next to me, sir. Um, so the the insect kind of creature goes over uh, Tekna's head. Um, it kind of gapes open its mouth, and it, it it's really weird. Um, like this red glow goes on Tekna's f- face, um, and then um. In Tekna's dream, I think is the, I think out of all the dreams, uh, Tekna's dream actually gave me nightmares uh, uh, when I was younger. Um, so yeah, Tekna's nightmare gave me my nightmares, me nightmares when I was younger. So yeah, I thought it was really uh, weird how like, um, you know, this, these numbers uh, f- 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 fall down. And it's um, a body just rising up, um, you know, it's kind of creepy. And it, it just um, kind of wraps around um, this person. I, th- I thought it was Techno, but I'm not too sure. It, it's like a weird, um, gritty uh, type creature. Um, and then we just see a Techno on the ground. Um, and you know when she wakes up, like the, all the things around her is like blocky machine, like every everything is in cubes. And then like Timmy comes along with his uh, glasses coming off. Uh, it's definitely a uh, creepy. Um, so overall, I think uh, Tacna's dream is the scariest. Uh, I I don't know what the hell I, I watched when I was younger, but you know. So um after the uh, monster transforming and leaving, um Techno wakes up. Uh, dra- uh she sees uh, Misa uh, like off her bed, so she goes over to wake her up. So yeah. Uh, so um Techno and Misa the panicky is. Uh, um conversations wakes other girls up so you know um they come to their room and you know um they all try to investigate um uh murder kind of alerts them l- later and then like kiko uh, you know senses it um we shout out to murder the pumpkin and kiko in this episode you know they uh, we uh, can't um, thank them enough, you know. Uh, Kiko is just the best uh, animal sidekick, and you know, Murta is just the best um, side character. Um, so, um, Flora kind of like uh, contacts uh, Murta, uh, which I think is really cool. Like, Flora is just uh, doing this, you know. Um, so she gets projection of um, Murta, and Murta kind of explains to Flora about, about 
um, what happened, um, which is uh, the chicks kind of sent them the gargoyle monster uh, to them. It drains their p powers, uh, you know, uh, it makes them easy for uh, chicks to take after them. So um, they make a plan um, uh, for tomorrow night. Um, in the morning, uh, they all gather around in the um, front, apart from Flora, who's trying to break free uh, Myrta. Uh, they all try to discuss like the events that happened last night. Um, Liam kind of talks about herself, like uh, her insecurities. She's wonder wondering if the tricks are after her. Um, so yeah. Um, and she's wondering if the tricks know about her past, um, her past and stuff. So yeah. Um, so, um, I like in one scene, like, how Bloom mentions that Flora hate, uh, hates the tricks. And she can't believe that Flora uh, hates, uh, used the word hate before. I think it was really iconic uh, line because uh, you know it's it's funny uh, like um like Bloom not believing that Flora would be like this because you know um Flora is that um a, a typical nice girl um so you wouldn't imagine her being like s spiteful but it does make you wonder like what if um Flora started to swear and stuff it's really funny. Um, so um, after that, uh, they all make a plan. Um, they're all in the pajamas. Um, they go off to bed. Um, um, well, they're not in the pajamas, but they are in the bed. Um, Meta as pumpkin starts to glow. And it alerts uh, Kiko to um, go to Bloom, and you know, the um, Kiko tries to wake everyone up. Um, the monster is like this a uh, dinosaur thing. Um, it comes onto uh, Flora's bed, uh, but good thing we have Flora. She is really strong in this episode, so she's coming through. Um, I'm glad that Flora defeats the uh, uh, monster with her vines. So it really shows that, you know, Flora is just amazing in this episode. Because, um, you know, she's really coming through. Like, she helped Myrta with this projection thing. And, you know, she's helping the girls uh, come through. Um... um what else? But I low-key uh, wondered what her uh, dream would be like. You know, um, the other girls, they all have their dreams. But Flora is the only one who didn't have her dream. So, you know, um, it's a both good thing and a bad thing. Because um, we would have have a, a depth... Um, research of what Flora would be like. Um, I did think, like, you know, Flora trying to save um, m her sister again, uh, Rose, um, slash Miele. Um, it, I think, you know, um, it reminds me of from Digimon Data Squad. I think it's one of, the, of this episode where um, Marcus, Thomas, and Yoshi, they all have these nightmares. And I was wondering, like, if uh, Flora would have nightmares like Marcus. Um, where, like, um, Marcus uh, is trying to save um, her sis his sister. Um, if that could be like that for Flora. Like, she's trying to save her sister, but she's unable to. Like, every time... Um, she tries to save her, sis her sister. It, um, she uh, like 
goes away from her, so like she's unable to save her sister. Uh, so that could have been her nightmare, you know. It's a really interesting way to like, you know, get uh, figure out Flora, but you know. Um, and then um, they all uh, come out of the rooms. And they all see it as a really huge dinosaur-like creature. Um, so, um, um, they all head out and transform. Um, then Myrtle kind of like uh, um, alerts Flora, like the dinosaurs after Bloom. So you know. Um, then the then the creature kind of um attacks Bloom, a bit giving her nightmares. Um, Bloom has a vision of her parents and a uh, sky. Um, first of all, uh, she has vision of like her parents spinning around and like questioning if she is real and stuff. Um, and are they the parents? Um, it's kind of like giving her a sick insecurities and then we have like um sky you know spinning around it just reminding us how, how much of a douchebag uh sky, sky is like remember his last episode um you know when he just ditched bloom and like in the next episode he is going to be a, a bigger good douche because you know um we'll find out because uh, i'll uh yeah. Uh, we all know what Sky did. Um. So um, Bloom um gets um wake up call from Stella for, to snap out of it. Um, they all go after the uh, monster outside. Um, with Stella teleportation. Um. Um. So they all go after the monster. But it attacks uh, Tecna and Musa, uh, following them off, and then, and then the tricks come. Um, Icy uh, puts uh, Stella and Flora in an ice thing, and um, they all capture Bloom with the creature. Um, with Bloom being so weak, um, they almost uh, manage to get Bloom's power. But unfortunately for Bloom, uh, Bloom um, Farragonda arrives and, you know, um, she uh, defeats the monster. Um, uh, Farragonda uh, with her, like, dress thing, um, she just chases after the tricks. Um, I think it's really hilarious how uh, Farragonda just chasing the tricks uh, it's just funny uh, to me um how like an old lady just uh, chasing the like teenagers in the sky um so the tricks peace out on head home um and then uh, like they all go the wings girls they go back to your bed and stuff um and then 